few members are here. Uh, my name is Rosie Carroll, I'm the chairman of the Stimming Fair. It's my right. I'm John Eccles, the Community Administrator at Clement Council. Uh, Paul Maskell, I'm um, representing Calvert and South Parish Council and Collective. Uh, Mike Goldthorpe, Amy Colts, Ward. Kevin Singleton, Saltwood Parish. Kevin Dolphin, Naval Police and Team Force. Uh, <laughs> is, is, is that two Kevins that we've got? Yeah, Amy. Amy Kevin. Yeah, Amy Kevin. Amy Kevin. Amy Kevin. Yeah, Amy Kevin. Amy Kevin. Amy Kevin. Amy Kevin. Amy Kevin. Very good, sir. Uh, David Whip. I'll oh, take your face for now. Uh, sorry, David Whip for uh, Evian Course Sports Councillors. Um, Ken, can I give apologies for Councillor Marjorie Adams, who is still unwell? Councillor Tom Witt, Councillor Fernando Ward. Mike Richardson, Chairman of Ireland Town Council. Good evening, uh, I'm Neil Watson, Pendles Planning Manager. Good evening, David Walker, Environment Services Manager, Mayor of Thank you. Um, we've got some planning, quite a few planning applications tonight. Can I just check with three speakers here? I've got a Zephyr Alec. Thank you. Uh, Dean Simpson. Yeah. And the Debbie Richards said, Thank you very much. Right. Item one, is there any declarations of interest? No? Okay. Any uh, members of the public here wish to ask a question? This is not on the agenda. No? Okay. Uh, minutes of the last meeting? Second. All in favour? Thank you. Item four, police and community issues. Yeah. Um, so we've got the crime figures. Uh, it's a comparison between September 2020 and September 2021. Um, so start with uh, burglaries. There's plus one uh, this year. Um, burglary commercial, which is obviously factories and other uh, commercial premises. Uh, that's minus three. Uh, vehicle crime is minus two. Uh, hate crime is level. There's not been any difference because there was none in the the year. Uh, assaults is minus two. Theft is also minus two. Criminal damage is plus four. Um, all crime in total is plus eleven. And antisocial behaviour <coughs> is minus two. That's the crime figures. Okay, thank you. Has anybody got any questions on the figures? No? Yeah? Um, yes, if that, if that, I, I could, uh, Chairman. I mean, obviously, uh, West Craven is, is generally a, a low crime area. Um, the, the old crime figures are, are showing a slight um, increase on the position last year, uh, September 2020. And last year, the uh, the situation with the pandemic was, I don't know, probably a little bit different to what it is now. So, is there any concern that there is uh, an increase in those all crime uh, figures? Uh, and uh, you know, is this typical of what's happening across the patch, or is West Brian different? From um, other, other areas. I'd say it would probably typical really because it's that's an accumulation of everything, you know, on total up to plus eleven in total. So it's I don't think it's gonna be a, a major impact one way or the other, you know, really, because it's quite low <coughs> it's really it's the, the figures are quite low. So okay. It's, okay. It's, it's and so. if I may chairman, in terms of criminal damage, um, I, I've probably reported uh, two, well, I can't, I don't, I'm not sure if it was in September, but I've probably reported two of the incidents that uh, are listed here. Um, is there any, and I'm not asking about those, but is there any uh, uh, progress with actually attributing those instances of criminal damage to the perpetrators? Or is it a case of people reporting and then 
Um, Nothing happened. Like you were saying, the, two of them are ones that you report personally, mm -hmm. um, and the other two are in relation to a certain address. So we've got line of inquiry on both, but it, as of yet, we've not got anyone in particular that's come, you know. That's Thank you, Jack. So, in, in short, it's worth yeah. people reporting, oh, yeah, even if they have hassle with 101. Yeah. Um, get it reported because it might get sorted. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Anybody got any issues that they want to fetch up? Cancel of cell. Yes, back again to uh, we're having problems now. Same problem. Speeding, parking on double yellow lines. Church Street is the main one for double yellow lines outside the bank. And it's obstructing, the, you know, the vehicles coming out of Newtown. You can't see for them, and as you're pulling out, they're on the zebra crossings. I've been aware, I'm aware of the zebra crossing not being properly uh, paid. You know, it's not clear enough. I've, I've got the LCC highways onto that, right. but it's the uh, somebody will be knocked over properly, and it's an ongoing problem. Is that? We've got people now overtaking us on the new road, even that distant road. They are overtaking people when you're driving and they're going at a speed. It seems an uncurring problem. I mean, I wish we could get somebody out with a speed camera and catch these sort of people, but nothing seems to be happening again. Yeah. And I've already mentioned you another incident, which has been reported, but I can't discuss this in the room. But I'm leaving that with you to do. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have you got anything else to add to tell us or not? Um, no, there's not any updates or anything. Yeah, we were expecting uh, the new sergeant to come to this meeting today, but unfortunately he's ill in the morning, so it's, it's been we're going to make a short notice really, so I've not really had a lot of time to prepare and as such. Okay. Anybody else got anything to wish to fetch up? No? Okay. Oh well, you've got us very lightly there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Tad. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, we'll move on to planning applications. Uh, the first one: change of use of the car park to a car hand wash at Skipton Road, Eber. Um, we've got Mr. Alley here to speak. Um, you've got five minutes. I can't give you any more than five minutes. Those are the rules. Okay, so if you want to... Just start down here. Yeah, you can, yeah. Wherever you're most comfortable. Good evening, hello everyone. Uh, I represent my brother, Imran Ali, regarding the time of uh, it's in front of you. Uh, previous background is that I've been only for three to four years, working off the LCC Council, uh, Hampshire County Council, obviously, uh, with adverse possession problems. We've had them problems sorted out, we've resolved them issues, and uh, we've had two applications refused previously from yourselves, um, which obviously, uh, previous, uh, yeah, applications that were refused due to little uh, problems, due to uh, problems that we've sorted out in this application. Um, regarding the residents, a uh, few residents have uh, complained about the drains which obviously the environmental agency and the Yorkshire Water have reviewed everything uh, and they will not have an issue with that. Uh, the slight issue that highways have got regarding this application is the bend. Uh, but the bend, if you, if you know the site, uh, the gentleman and, uh, uh, you know the bend comes after our site, it's not on the bend. The exit we asked for is just before the bend and there's visible uh, uh, visibility there on both sides of the road. So, uh, in our opinion, there's no issue. But if anything, I think we sort the issue out because if the cars are going in and out from one side, one entrance, it, it's an exit and an entrance point, it, it can block up traffic. But what we try to do is putting another exit there so it, it's one way traffic, one way coming in, one way to go out. Previously, uh, uh, the council, uh, sorry, the planning officers have. Uh, accepted that the uh, fencing that we put up, uh, well, uh, proposed to put up, they've said that it won't be a problem. In this application, the planning officers have uh, gone against the previous advice as to the fencing that it would cause a problem in the conservation area. I have emailed all the councils involved 
yesterday uh, for yourselves to look at everything and consider the previous applications so you've had enough time to have a look at that. Uh, there's a few residents, about well, one resident who spoke about the noise of the car, uh, cars, uh, sorry, the noise will not let us go to sleep of car wash. Car wash is only going to be open during the day and will be closed before the evening time at 6 o'clock. Uh, the noise with which the machinery will make will not be more than what the cars will make <coughs> on that road. So environmental health already have had a look at that issue and uh, the machines won't, it's only two jet washers going to hoover and I'm sure the car noises will over uh, lap that. Basically, a uh, few points that, uh, which were relevant and uh, the council have left on uh, with the uh, comments that the uh, residents have brought up. I mean, it's not our issue or I don't think it's even an issue in the planning application if the house wide rates and bodies go past. I mean, that's not an issue for us, is it? That's not an issue in the planning uh, department into our application. So, the, you know, irresponsible comments have been made by residents. We respect the residents, but we have been we have been told that we are uh, all, they are already looking at a scrapyard, and they are already illegal workers, rackets running at the car wash. We have been accused of things like that, and uh, I don't I think it's irresponsible of the council to leave comments on the website, uh, basically because we are not illegal immigrants. We are I'm a British citizen. And human exploitation is what well, they wrote that. That's got nothing to do with this application. So uh, I don't think uh, they should have been left on uh, the internet, uh, but they have been, and no one has removed them. Uh, basically, going down to the uh, car wash, the community does need a car wash. We have been in this community. We've had a business before in Barn Oswick and Erie. We have run successful, successful businesses here as a family and we have had no problems here. Um, the car wash people tend to, when we spoke to people, the community, they said that they have to go to Corn and Skipton and be down, down to Nelson just to go get the cars clean and get a car wash, uh, uh, to wash the cars. So the community, what we've got the gist of, except for these three, four residents across the road, uh, the community are happy with the car wash being there. Um, Further to the issues we've got with the site, is we've owned the site for now three to four years. Two previous applications, uh, we've looked at them towards what the council requires, us, towards what highways, environmental health. We've done everything in this application to uh, go towards the agency's right to be uh, uh, legally bound, right, not to cause anyone any hassle. So we've gone uh, with the planning consultant, we've spent time, effort, money in this application so that it will get refused. Um, which obviously, if you can look, the only refusal we recommended today is our uh, application. Basically, uh, every week or so, there's illegal dumping going on there, uh, which we have to clean up at a cost to ourselves. Uh, enforcement officers are keep bringing us saying, "Oh, you can't park cars here." But when we uh, contested that uh, into the legal, legal uh, planning commission, as it's a car park, we can park cars there. Uh, however we want. So now the enforcement officers are just uh, waiting for this application for to go forward. They take that obviously. So basically we're in a situation where we bought the site three to four years ago. We think we've been treated misfair uh, unfairly <coughs> and no one's listening. Okay. This application we've put, we've consulted every single thing on the previous applications so we don't have any problems with the application. Now we really, need, uh, need to wind up. Yeah, so we need to wind up. Uh, yeah, so that's basically how uh, uh, us and we put in this application in, and that's what uh, we want you to look at. Obviously, I've sent you everything in detail as an email, and uh, that's for yourself to decide now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Alec. Has any members got any questions for Mr. Alec before we go further? I can't speak. Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, could I ask if the applicants of undertaken a detailed survey of the site uh, in terms of the water courses that run well beneath it but through the site uh, are they aware of the culvert that comes under the old railway line and runs alongside the old railway line 
there is various businesses running exactly the same. Uh, there's all the water. Uh, there's a water problem in full year. It's been flooded before as well. And the car wash, environmental health, obviously review the application, so are the ocean waters, and that should be sufficient enough that the water will be controlled. Thank you. Do, do I take it that that's a no? A survey is not recommended. In the, if it was recommended in the application, we would have got a survey done. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Watson, would you like to respond to some of the questions that Mr. Ivor raised? Uh, Chair, I think uh, most of them are, are, are covered in the one. Well, uh, the planning merits are covered in the report. I think uh, you have uh, a site that uh, they clearly have bought. It's a small site, it's a prominent one, and it's on a, a bend, and, and there are restrictions with that, uh, and obviously in a conservation area. So, uh, uh, a use of that isn't going to be an expansive use because of the nature of, of the standard. Uh, but that's covered in the report, I think, Chairman, for, for, for you to, to discuss. Just uh, Mr. Allen referred to uh, comments on a, on a website. It is difficult. Uh, you have to have a balance between what isn't uh, libelous and allowing people free speech on there. And we do get legal advice from our solicitors about what should and shouldn't be removed. And we remove very few things because people should be allowed to express their, their views within a, a legal framework. So. We don't take things off lightly because people should have that choice and you have the, the, the chance to respond to that. So I've not seen anything on that I, in my view will be libelous. Okay, thank you. Councillor uh, Thank you, Chairman. Uh, well, I, I, I have nothing against uh, car washes and I think there will be perfectly good sites in Eby and uh, beyond that would be suitable for um, such a use. I don't think this is one of them. And the uh, recommendation is to refuse uh, uh, on two grounds really. First of all, um, essentially the appearance uh, within the conservation area, uh, and secondly, the uh, accept unacceptable adverse impacts on the, the safety of um, the, the highway. And I, I think both those grounds for refusal are sound. Uh, I have great sympathy with the applicants. Uh, they, they bought this site from Lancashire County Council. Perhaps they bought a pig in a poke and the county council readily took the money but clearly when the site was sold it was out without the benefit of any planning consent um, it wasn't subject to getting planning consent for any particular use and I think it's a case of caveat emptor or buyer beware so I, I, I hope that there is a um, an acceptable use that, that can be found for this, and um, that you know perhaps we have a, another application in due course for something that we can. I'm really sorry, I can't let come back in. Um, um, I'll just reply back to this. In, no, I in, I'm sorry. In terms, terms, sorry, in terms of uh, the question I asked about the culvert, uh, I'm aware uh, from first-hand experience of the. Uh, the, the water courses that come through that site um, have previously caused flooding on that site itself but then contribute to the bigger problem just down the road when you get to lane ends and the water from there uh, contributes to the, the flooding uh, to houses and other businesses in the area. So it is important that any use adequately takes account of the, uh, the culverts, the watercourses and the drainage to ensure that the situation doesn't become any worse. And uh, the Lee Local Flood Authority, uh, Yorkshire Water and the Environment Agency, I have to say, know less about the drains and flooding in Erie than anyone of us would care to um, acknowledge. Okay. 
Councillor Garthorpe. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think Councillor Whit will remember we did a site visit on this uh, two years ago. And, uh, I remember David raising the issue of the drainage there. Unfortunately, this site is where it is, and you, you, you can't change the topography of the site. Um, it is in a bad position. Whatever you do with the site, you're not going to achieve the displays that are required and, and, and the sight lines and everything else on the highways. It's unfortunate um, that uh, um, Mr. Imran and Ali and his family hadn't took advice from planning before purchasing the land, I would have suggested. But it's not going to be able to achieve uh, on past examination, anything to do with vehicles on and off that site uh, in any quantity. So it, it's not going to work, whatever happens. So uh, it's where it is. It's a zigzag area. It's an area of high traffic flow. It's an east-west traffic flow area. You're not going to change it. Um, it's on the conservation area as well. So two to three points. It ain't going to alter, I'm afraid. Um, with going over old ground, the same ground we covered on um, the um, taxi rack uh, situation. So I'm afraid that's where we are and uh, I, I would have to recommend that we follow the officers with the fuel resource on this one. So you're moving that we refuse it? Yeah. Do we have a seconder for that? Sorry, I thought I'd moved it, but no, seconded it. Well, that's been moved and seconded then. So the, the position is that we refuse the application. <coughs> All those in favour? I'm afraid that's unanimous, so I'm very sorry, but it has been turned down. Was that three votes? Sorry? Was that three votes? Five. No, that was five. Oh, five. There's, in, in this room, there's five councillors, the Pendle councillors can vote. <coughs> Excuse me, we have members of the town council, they can move items and everything, but they're not <coughs> entitled to vote. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Right, we'll move on to the next application. <coughs> Fairy condition of land opposite Ben Lane, Barn Oldswick. I'll have Mr Dean Simpson who'd like to speak. Again, you've got five minutes to get yeah, going right, to finish. Thank okay, thank you. Excuse me. Okay, uh, first, thanks for the opportunity to say a few words. Um, the vast majority of uh, what's contained is contained very well in the, in the report which uh, Tommy put, uh, put together, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And there's just a few uh, bits I'm trying to uh, perhaps elaborate on there, uh, if I may. Um, part of, uh, on the three, uh, you on the screen, the three pots to the, to the right, we've, we've sought to lift the levels, uh, the floor levels in there. Um, the top property and uh, the left hand side one stays exactly the same. Um, the reason we've, we've sought to do this is, is so we can get quite a fair drainage back into the, uh, the, the, the existing manhole on Ben Lane, which is always where it's going to dis uh, discharge into, uh, albeit um, on the current approved scheme with by a, 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 a you know, electrical electric driven pump station to serve those four properties. Um, we felt that you know, in these times that we've all got responsibility to try and, and make sure we're doing things in the most environmental friendly way possible and we've got a pumping station uh, to serve four houses um, for the duration of their, the, the life of those houses that we can serve that 200 years or whatever. Um, it seems to be um, a, uh, perhaps not the best idea, um, given a relatively minor tweak, we'll, we'll do away with that, that requirement. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we've, uh, we've put forward. This will bring about some additional works to the site, of course, without some additional dead wall in the ground and uh, failing to make up levels and such like. Uh, but we, we just felt that that was the, the, the better thing to do, really. Um, just another point that I'd just like to raise as well is the, the byproduct of, of, ra of raising the internal levels. The front gardens, uh, which, which are put onto them there, uh, with increasing. Uh, Amount as you went to the right, the, the gardens would have sat quite low from the road, sat to the road side, and we felt we felt a little bit in the hole really. Um, the the, the um, benefit of the, oh, it's, it's a bit of a backup really, but the benefit of raising those levels there 
the last one up the arms and sitting a little bit higher, and we just think we'll get a fan up to a far better outdoor space uh, for a pro. Obviously, any potential residents there, obviously, we'll be aware of the, um, the need for decent outside space in the last few years. I told you, I'll be that close, but uh, nevertheless. Um, so, we're just going to be able to, it just made sense. There's obviously a lot of, there's a lot of few bits and pieces in there which. Uh, um, Mr. Wilson may well touch on it or not, but certainly uh, in the report. So it, it was just a little bit that I just wanted like to elaborate on there and just sort of so, um, person to person might understand why we sought to, to amend um, the, 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 the approved scheme. Uh, and that's, that's all it was for me, thank you. Okay, thank you. Have you got any questions or something that you need to come to it? Um, thank you, Chairman. It, it says in the report that uh, to raise the floor levels on three of the four proposed dwellings. I wonder if Mr Simpson or, or, or Mr Watson could explain um, what the differences are. I'm not sure whether we've got any sections. Uh, I, can, uh, I, I can tell you what the problem is. Uh, so if you bear with me. So as you're right to say, the, the, um, the plot number one, uh, which is uh, near Skipton Road, uh, that remains exactly the same. Uh, the difference in plots two and three, um, so those two run together is 850 millimetres difference, uh, and plot four is 1300 millimetres difference. Right, so we, we're looking at a slab level 1.3 metres above existing. The, it's above, the, on the bottom one, the, the one the furthest away from, uh, from Skipton Road. Yes, um, I don't think familiar with the site, but it, dropped, it drops away. If you sort of move back to, or still on Ben Lane, the site sort of drops away to your, to your right behind the wall, behind the current boundary wall. Um, so the, 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 the existing scheme always did have them stepped. Um, there was always a difference between the four levels uh, of all four, I think the two in the middle were always the same. Um, so we tried to kind of replicate that, but we just looked to raise them sufficiently. Um, just say just to make the uh, the drainage work and, and, and to get away with that full installation. Yeah. Now I, I appreciate Chairman <coughs> that um, we're not looking at a, a, a linked uh, planning permission that there is for the dwellings to the rear of these four. Mm -hmm. um, they're clearly on uh, ground that runs down the hill. That's right. And we're not looking at that application, we're looking at this application. But I can't help thinking that as the ground falls away parallel with, with, with Skipton Road, that those the way, the way towards um, uh, the, the sports, sports, sports field. field. Yes, yes. yes, so the sports field at a lower level. Yeah, if I could just fetch Mr. Yes. Watson in, he might well, be able to explain what, it better for you. Well, what I want to know is if these floor levels have been raised to remove the necessity for a pumped uh, sewage system. Yes. What's going to happen to the dwellings further down the hill? Yeah. Which um, will they on, be on a different system or? They are on a different system. Um, as you say, it's a, it, uh, obviously that's uh, with ourselves. So I'm happy to comment on that. I'll let me to speed on that. That's currently for reserve uh, matters at the moment, and I'm, I'm sure you're aware. Um, on the drainage scheme that was part of that, uh, we the, the approved scheme at the moment uh, for the for the 14 in the rear is for a pumping station in the bottom, um, which comes out of the site and discharges into well it's the same manhole uh, just on Ben Lane there. Um, we are uh, well, well, the, the details which we put through at the moment uh, on the reserve map to show that the drainage actually a grant to fed drainage we're looking to do away with the pumping station on there as well. Excuse me, on there as well. Uh, we'll fall through where we are in discussions, uh, toward the end of discussions, uh, with, uh, uh, with Rolls Royce about taking the drain into their land and up the boundary. And there's a, there's a manhole, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what number of skips and road it is, but the one nearest the, um, nearest the sports field, uh, there's a manhole in, uh, in the road there which we're looking to connect into. Uh, and that's the details which we've currently got in. Uh, on the uh, on the approved matters at the moment, so we are making efforts to, to do away with that that scenario uh, on both schemes. 
Yeah, Councillor, if you can just touch no. Mr. Walsley first, no. he'll be able to answer some of your questions. I've, I've got one further question, which I think um, Mr. Simpson may be able to answer. Or perhaps Councillor Tom Whitcan, if he uses his phone and looks it up. Um, but am I correct in assuming that the foul sewer on Ben Lady uh, goes, it, it's sort of like on the, the ridge there? So does that foul sewer run into the network via the uh, sewer that goes underneath Courts Avenue? Uh, and am I correct in assuming that the other sewer that you referred to on Skipton Road actually flows um, the opposite direction and goes underneath the canal um, off Courts Lane? Uh, you might not be able to. I'm not familiar with that. The, the manual on Skipton Road at uh, the bottom end uh, is on the on this side, of the, on the side side, if you will, of the road, just just off, off the curb, and that runs under the road, and I think shoots across. Uh, I think it actually goes through and under um, down the side of the um, uh, Rolls Royce property, the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the manhole at the top end, um, you can probably just see there on the. Uh, on there, there's, there's only two panels. There's not a great deal of help from from the from the point of connection. Uh, I think it just actually serves one property. That manual uh, to the right, uh, just on the screen there, actually then shoots, if you will, down to the bottom uh, and, and uh, serves the property that's uh, sort of the embankment there. Um, but then, so th there's only that it only serves that property uphill from the point of connection there, uh, and that was always the point of connection anyway. Uh, of of it with the uh, I say. So the point of connection, the amount of discharge is exactly the same, it's just we, we, we think it's a decent idea to do away with the pump and stage for the okay. duration of those. Okay, let's hang on with me, Councillor. Let's just touch Mr. Watson in. Sorry, Chair, that, that, that's the point that I was going to say. This is uh, the scheme, uh, clearly, is uh, uh, looking to redesign uh, where uh, the, the effluent goes from there. But this connection point is the same. As has been approved, all this is doing is instead of pumping it, it's gravity, gravity fed. So that's the point the chairman is going to make. It's not increasing or changing the discharge, it's just how it gets there. Okay, has that answered your question, Councillor Rick? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, by the wizardry, just flash your, your screen, by the wizardry of modern technology, we have got the sewer map uh, on screen and uh, I was correcting what I was asking, that Ben Lane flows straight towards Van Oldswick um, in, in a zone called Pendle Central. And uh, the uh, manhole on Skipton Road going out towards Thornton and Craven, yes. it, it goes into the <coughs> overloaded system that goes underneath the canal. So are you happy with this, sir? Um, well, I, I wouldn't say I'm happy, Chairman. Anybody else got anything? What do you want to do with this application? Mm -hmm. Councillor Witt? Uh, Chairman, I'm, I think I'm happy to go with the offer, offer recommendations. I mean, it's uh, pretty clear it's just uh, something, it's not a, a huge change. But, okay, so we'll leave it there. Yeah, drop second for that. Yeah. So, okay, all those in favour? Sorry, all those in favour? Three, three four, four. four. Okay, are you against Council Whip? I'm just abstaining. abstaining. You're abstaining. Okay, that's been moved then. That's been approved. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Okay, let's move quickly move on to the next one which is erection of a research and design facility at Thurmag Mill. It's not Cobb Lane, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, need, I need to go to that stage. Yeah. <laughs> Cobb Lane. Thank you. So, let, let's take uh, R&D facility next. <laughs> we can do that. We'll do, we'll do yours next, and then you're not sat here waiting for the rest of the night. Uh, so, Mrs Richardson, would you like to put your name forward? 
Uh, good evening, my name is Debbie Richardson, I live in Kelbrook. Um, I'm talking here on behalf of the residents of Kelbrook. Um, and we have a number of objections to the plans that were submitted under reserve matters. Um, we received eight comments on this application, which indicates the residents of the village still have major concerns about this development. The key concern is around the access during the development. The report that came out um, says that this should not be addressed at this time. But we were told that it was not relevant when we objected to the original application back in 2017. So the question I'd like to ask is, when do we request these conditions? The absence of doubt, we feel very strongly that deliveries in large lorries should be restricted to the times between 9.15 and 3pm. And this is the practical reason that Waterloo Road is very difficult to travel during the school drop-off and pick-up times because of the very limited parking and difficulty of getting large vehicles along that road, let alone any vehicles actually, let alone a large lorry. These lorries will also have to travel through the village from Church Lane over the stone bridge near the church and we would like LCC to confirm that this bridge is strong enough to take the number of lorries that will be using it during the development. Coming back to the plans, while we, they follow the plans that were originally submitted as requested by the inspectorate, um, which we tried to object to at the time but weren't allowed to, we do have a number of concerns. It's essential that the five metre buffer to the water course is maintained, not just during the development, which they've indicated, but once the buildings have been completed, and therefore the gardens of the houses must not be closer than five metres. On the current plans that I reviewed, a number of the gardens were shown to be one to two metres from the water course. Related to this is the surface drainage. The current plan proposes a tank between the other hall and the first house. It would actually be much better than this proposed uh, by a number of people now that visible drainage points, such as a pond, where residents can see if it's in danger of flooding, is created rather than an underground tank. This would also encourage wildlife and would be much more in keeping with the rural environment. Mm -hmm. This has been done in Salterford, uh, where it is working um, at Salterford, although they could probably do a bit better management of the land. But it is working and there it is attracting a lot of wildlife. This raises the point that all the common areas where planting is proposed needs to have a long-term sustainable management plan with the funding to support this for a lifetime of development. The Environment Officer did raise this and raised the tree planting and wild biomeadow and we agree with this wholeheartedly. These changes require a significant change to the plans and we would recommend there's a review of the houses to be included. Having bungalows within the development as the land rises up the lane would lower the roof line and retain the views of the listed buildings uh, at the other hall. Finally, I would like to request that the revised buildings be brought back to the committee so that they're made available to the public before approval is given. These requested changes are significant and interest in this development by the community means that they should be delegated for approval. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Watson, uh, uh, yes, you yes. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, uh, a, a couple of things on, on here. Uh, the access arrangements are uh, a combination of uh, this application, the, the outline consent, I'm afraid, and, and the construction code of practice uh, uh, condition on the outline consent. And it's uh, really up to the applicant how they, they deal with that. But by that, what I mean, the access arrangements and the road network being acceptable or not was dealt with by the inspector at the outline stage. So uh, the inspector has, uh, rightly or wrongly, in people's view, but uh, his view was he's deemed that the access, uh, the site can be accessed uh, safely. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't he shouldn't have approved the outline permission. So access was approved at that, that, that outline stage in terms of the principle of development. Uh, condition four of that outline uh, consent related to a construction code of management uh, plan. Uh, now, that is a condition that has to be satisfied. That's, they haven't applied to discharge that condition. So that construction code of practice will have to be a, subject to a, a, a further application to discharge that condition. Now that did, I've got to say unusually, because I don't think it's legal, but the inspectors did it, so we'll ask them to do it, uh, require a routing plan uh, uh, and times of, of operation of the site. So that will come forward via that. When I say I don't think that's legal, you can't control where traffic comes. I'm not certain, that if I'm honest, the inspectors got that right, but to satisfy the condition, they will have to, to bring that, that forward. Uh, 
The uh, five metre, uh, uh, we, we had late plans in the or on the web, we put them on as soon as we could, but the gap has been increased to five metres across the watercourse, so that has uh, been, been, been uh, changed now, so that, that's in place. In terms of uh, uh, maintenance, condition fours of this requires further details of the probably coming back with a full, if members wish to approve this, a full uh, uh, array of, of conditions discharging. Uh, but that requires details of, of, of uh, maintenance. Uh, I think that was it, unless I've missed <coughs> if I have, I'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, Councillor uh, Thank you, Chairman. Can I uh, pick up on the comments about uh, Waterloo Road? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not in Calvary every day, and I've seen Waterloo uh, Road gridlocked on. Well, at least a handful of occasions. Well, I think bin day is a particular problem. But the, the issue is, I mean, I've seen it uh, gridlocked with a, a tractor and a trailer. I've seen it gridlocked uh, with, with trucks. And on occasion, I've just seen it gridlocked um, because there's parking either side and the, there's vehicles going down and vehicles coming up and nobody's moving anywhere. So I think the comments about uh, trying to, uh, for any deliveries to be uh, concentrated during the, the middle of the day, or not the middle of the day, but outside school uh, uh, dropping off and picking up times is absolutely bob on. The problems are big enough outside school hours, but they are so intense and, and there's more than one person in the room uh, that has those first hand on a daily basis uh, what those difficulties are that we, we really ought not to be making them any worse and, and of course wishful thinking we would have wished that the outline application was rejected in the first place because of those difficulties but a government inspector so fit to, to know better um, in terms of the maintenance of any landscaped areas, I, I think just want to check with Mr. Watson really. Uh, my understanding is that it, any new planting, uh, then the, the, the maintenance would be limited to five years. Can we extend that period to, to make it longer? Or is, is that something that's, uh, that's uh, forbidden? Uh, Chairman, uh, uh, there are, t there are two, two aspects of that. One is, if you put a landscape in a plan, you will normally say anything dead, dying or disease should be replaced in five years. However, at the maintenance of that, we're, we're asking via condition uh, four of a long-term management plan to tell us uh, how they intend to manage all the non-private parts, shall we say. Of the, so that would be in perpetuity. Okay, not sure we should really be talking about private parts. Oh, that's what I said, that's <laughs> <laughs> um, I, But yeah, I mean, I think, you know, unless they're going to put a, a management company in place, um, you, you know, are they asking for, for, for land to be um, looked after by the local authority? I'm not aware that that's the case. So I think it is a very valid question as to how it will be looked after in perpetuity rather than the, the short term. And uh, I think, uh, Chairman, the, the, the issue of, um, we're going to return to this theme when we get onto the R&D for Hope 10, but uh, the issue of uh, increasing biodiversity by incorporating uh, a surface water attenuation pond uh, is bog on because the, 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 the wildlife that that then uh, the pond enables is infinitely more than uh, having some milk crates underground for an underground storage system or oversized pipes that would hold water and attenuate it going uh, down into the watercourse. 
but the attenuation absolutely needs to be there because the problems of flooding uh, at Yellow Hole and going down that culvert that runs um, down both Blue Road and, and Main Street is, is something that um, we need to be very, very alert to indeed. So I, I think there's general points that have been raised there by the way, that, that uh, we ought to be heeding very strongly. Mr Watson, can we uh, do any of these? Can we have any extra conditions on things like the biodiversity and uh, conditioning deliveries not to be in peak times? Uh, Chairman, uh, condition four of the inspector's uh, uh, decision say that the developers have to come back to council with uh, construction code of practice including times of deliveries, wheel washing uh, and a route management uh, uh, plan. Uh, and when I said before about route management, uh, uh, if uh, a contractor comes to site and doesn't go via the route management plan, we, we won't be able to prosecute them. So I think it's a some of the inspectors put on that's unenforceable, but we will uh, ask them for those issues. So that's already in <laughs> place. In terms of the, in terms of the uh, swale, uh, I'm, some work some done. You know, I look at some of the if, it, if it's a pond and it it, it uh, acts as a pond as opposed to a just a swell which are barren areas. The swales don't actually increase wildlife, they just sit there and fill up and, and down, but if you have a pond there. But um, there's nothing in the planning decision by the inspector which would require them to have that biodiversity improvement in there. So we could go back to the developer if this, that's the committee's wish to ask for that to be considered, but I don't think we, we will be able to compel them to do it. That would have been done at the outline stage. Chairman, okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm just marvelling at the concept of the developers bringing material in over Cobble Lane from Fall Ridge, Great. Yeah. or indeed um, using Old Stone Trough Lane, which more often than not has a road closure on it. So, you know, well, they used to live up there. I know exactly what the trouble is. I'm just going to cancel that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Councillor Whip, for reminding us that there is actually we're currently a road closure on Cobble Lane, so on <laughs> up at the top of there somewhere. So I'm going to be, be living it every day, as you say. Um, and a number of points. Just want to bring up um, a couple of points and go through. I know some of it's old, old hat, but I just want to check a few things in my own in my own mind. Um, the landscape plan that's been developed. Um, there was one loaded today, or one not today, on the 29th of September, which I downloaded because. Um, Joanne sent us the stuff today with it on. I was thinking, oh, that's exciting, that's all done. I actually can't see any difference. I looked at that, and I looked at the plan, and the one that was uploaded on the 29th of September is exactly the same diagram as the one that was uploaded on the 22nd of July. So it may be that they've made a plan, but that isn't the information that's available on the site today. It's exactly the same diagram with the same date on it, June date. Now, I don't know whether that's something different, but the one that was on the site today that I looked at and printed off, and here it is, is exactly the same diagram. I can't actually see any difference in that diagram at all. Okay. So I don't know what we're supposed to judge it on, that actually this landscape plan is meeting the standards that are available. It may well be that there is one, but that isn't the one that's on the site, or at least it wasn't this afternoon, because that is the one that's on the site, and it's... Not, not different. Well, just stop this to what's <coughs> that. I'm, all, I'm always in this position where I'll be before me, but yeah. uh, my, I, I looked at them today as uh, I, I, I would normally do, and I think there are differences, but uh, I don't want to play spot the difference now because I haven't got the plans actually in front of me. No. Uh, but it, it's, it's mainly to do with the width of the, uh, uh, of, of the areas in front of the properties, uh, and, and they are different to the old plans. So, uh, and some of the species of planting trees which uh, 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 Lee Johnson, who was leading us by the way, uh, uh, asked for and they have changed. Yeah, I think we could probably have a plant fence spot difference actually, because um, that looks slightly different to this, but I think that's, that's not a landscape plant. No. Is it not? That's a layout plan. That's so layout you've plan. Got to watch. Well, this, yeah, this is the landscaping plan because it actually says so on it, it says landscape master plan. 
Um, and it is the one you know, need to big eyes for this because it says June on there. Um, so anyway, I, I, all I'm saying is that the information that is presented to, that's available, isn't sufficient to make a decision on that at the moment. Um, so that's, that's one. Okay, next, next one I just wanted to check was the, there's an issue about the consultees and again, the parish council's response made it quite clear that the actual consultee who was consulted was not the right one with regard to the electricity supply to that area. It's more than power grid, not, as it says down here, um, electrical, is the one that's on the list. Electricity, yeah, Electricity Northwest was the consultee that was consulted with, and they sent back this letter, which makes it quite clear that it's not them, and that they should really, we should really consult the actual people who provide power to that area, who is in fact more than power grid. And there are a number of issues with the electricity supply to that end of Kelbrook and Northern Power have provided a number of um, statistics to say that the level of outages in that area are worse than the average and worse than their standard as well. So I do think before a decision can be made, um, we do need to actually have a proper understanding of how that is going to be mitigated and what the provision for power is by the power supplier to make sure that that's going to be, be done. Um, but to say, none of this is not recognising that the principle of development is established and accepted. We know that, that's fine. We just want to make this the best development that can be done in that circumstances. And I think the Parish Council's response in the report, which is printed in full, pretty much says what needs to be said and what needs to be done. So there is a consultee, a pretty important one, missing from this. The last point I just want to raise is the one about the highways, and I know we've gone round and round, but I'm not sure about, um, and I, I, I totally accept what's said about whether or not it's enforceable or anything, but I've got the planning appeal decision here that I've downloaded from Pendle's site, and the condition, the schedule of conditions here, number 10, says no development shall take place including any works of demolition until a construction method statement, which looks like other thing I've got here. This um, has been submitted and approved in writing by the local planning authority. Now, I presume that this account committee is essentially the authority. The statement shall provide for the parking of vehicles, loading and unloading plus, a lot of other stuff. Um, sections seven and eight says the delivery, demolition, and construction working hours. This statement talks in its very last point about hours of operation, working hours on the site, 8 till 5.30, Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 1. So if you were working hours on the site, it doesn't say about delivery, demolition and construction. It only doesn't talk about delivery hours. So this statement doesn't actually say what the inspector requested it should say. And also it does say about the routing of construction vehicles. While I absolutely take the point about how enforceable it is, because, you know, actually having control over the way things go, I do think that a condition that was in a statement, then it didn't have to be conditioned, that a condition that outlines the requirements with regard to access through the community, and again, I accept the position that the inspector has said access is accessible, well that's fine, if you're stood there outside and you can access onto the site. There's nothing in this appeal decision that says it's easy to get up and down the road, and therefore that's absolutely fine. There's an implication that it can be accessed, but it doesn't say when it can be accessed, which I think is probably why the inspector looked at that and said, this needs to cover the delivery work, delivery hours, and the routing of construction vehicles, and this statement doesn't have it. So I do think that there are a number of things missing from this document, and I do think that before a decision can be taken, now, I was going to argue that this shouldn't be delegated to authority delegated, it should come back to committee. And I know that the uh, um, recommendation has been changed to approval on the basis of the landscape plan, but I do think, as I said, the landscape plan hasn't really been had the chance to be looked at by councillors. But there are not least the consultee that needs to be um, consulted, and the detail of the um, this. Uh, construction method statement, which the inspector has asked for by name, because it a construction method statement, isn't anywhere near adequate to meet the standards for this um, for this development. So I do think there's this will have still there's still work to be done on this, both by the authority <coughs> and by the developer. And I think that it's not ready. Okay, Mr. Watson, do you want to <coughs> uh, Yes, Chair. Uh, sorry, I may have not uh, explained myself uh, properly. 
construction method statement has to be subject to another application for discharging condition. It's not for determining under this application. It's not been applied for to be discharged here. So that will have to come forward as a condition discharge under the outline consent. Okay, so it's not for determination here. It is for a discharge of condition. Chairman, the power supply, it's difficult. Uh, uh, we, the power supplies aren't statutory consultees in the process, they're there as a, a, a matter of, of courtesy. Uh, provision of infrastructure, whether that can or cannot cope, is for the outline stage. Even if the power supply is came and said we can't supply power here, it would not be a reason to. We're approving details, not the principle. The principle is set at the, by the inspector at the outline stage. So even were they to say absolutely can't supply power here, it wouldn't be a reason for refusal because we're looking at details of the site, not the principle. So we can go back to them uh, by all means, but it will not make any difference to whether this uh, application could or couldn't be approved. Okay, um, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I just wanted to ask about the attenuation bond if it could be conditioned to have it. I mean, you said not. Um, I do, however, think it would be worth going back to developers and asking them, um, would you change it to a, a surface pond? Um, I mean, it's obviously a contentious issue. And the council has declared a climate emergency. Um, and I think we should, we should go back to them and ask, you know, is this something that you can change in your application? Okay, anybody else? Yeah, Councillor Yeah, can I just say, I mean, I, I do appreciate what you're saying about it being as opposed to a principle and as opposed to detail. The principle is not under question here. We know that it's going to be a principle. But actually, the detail of whether or not there's going to be enough power to go in there does affect what the development looks like. I don't know how that can not be the case because if there, if, if there isn't enough power to get in there, then surely the developer's got to provide something which will manage with what power there is, or the power grid has got to improve its supply. Uh, Chairman, the design won't change, you're approving the design. If the design was going to change because there was lack of anything there, it'd have to change the design. What, you, what we would be getting is what, if committed, approved, whether it's deferred this time or not, is the design there. That won't make any difference to whether it's got power or not in there. What I'm saying, Chairman, is uh, supply of power to this development is not material for this application, that was for the outline stage. I can only give that advice, Jim, whether you take that on board or not, but I'm giving you very clear advice, as I did when we looked at the, uh, when we could uh, uh, deal with this sort of previous application uh, or refuse to deal with it. Very clear, it is not for reserve matters about power. Um, Probably a shame then that it was never properly looked at in principle, however. Um, there's another question then, I mean... Sorry, sorry. They never do. No. Inspectors, no. it's, it's not something that, that is a requirement of... I've never known it looked at in any appeal I've been in in 30 years. Can we just return to the um, highways one then? And uh, probably just for my own understanding, the process of discharge of conditions then. So, if this was approved, as it is in front of us now, then in order for it to go forward, the applicant, the developer, has to submit a, another, better, one of these construction method statements and traffic management plan. That meets the inspector's standard, because this doesn't meet the inspector's standard, before they can continue their development. Is, and is that a discharge? Is that what's meant by discharge? Yeah, it has. Even though <coughs> you can submit information, but unless you're applying to discharge conditions, it, it's not just implied or inferred. Mm -hmm. You've got to apply to discharge conditions. So uh, this application is uh, uh, for the reserve matters, appearance, landscape, and layout, as it says in there. It's not to discharge conditions. So they will have to come back and make a formal application. Uh, to discharge not only that any other condition and I've got sorry I've not got a list of them no. but every condition that requires discharge and they will have to, to submit. So even if this was approved and they can't actually do anything until they've done that. They, until they've applied to discharge those conditions. Because the conditions that the inspectors laid out here, and I know I'm being pedantic because I'm trying to get it through my head, 
if the because the conditions the inspectors laid out here aren't currently met, in order for that to be either discharged or met, they would still have to come back through the process, would they? Yeah. So as, as it stands at the moment, even if it's approved, they can't go and start building. Well, Chair, we get into a, a technical side, side of it. Uh, <coughs> conditions will say, some of them will say you to supply details within a certain time period, others will say, unless and until you've got a ramping condition, uh, you uh, submit details and they're approved, you can't start. If you start, then it's an unlawful start. As the time frames here, well, if, if they get consent, they will, will allow them for the two years, but uh, they won't legally be able to start unless they discharge those conditions. Mm -hmm. So, okay. sorry, I can't, I've not got every one of them, and I, and I don't think it's for this committee to go through every single uh, 18 conditions, whatever they may be, but they have, there's a lawful process where if the condition requires to be discharged, they have to apply to discharge it. That comes before the <coughs> planning authority to, do, to determine. Okay, so I don't want to go through them all, it's just this one, just to make sure that you know, I'm meeting the understanding of the community as much as me, that, and it does say no development shall take place before they've presented this document. And as I say, currently this document isn't to the standard the inspector requires. But so, whether it is or it isn't, the, the point I'm making is that lawfully they haven't applied to discharge the condition. So it's irrelevant in a sense what that says because they ha will have to come and formally ask to discharge that condition. And when you say discharge, just to be absolutely clear what we mean by discharge, and I'm sorry for being pedantic here, but I just need to understand what we mean by discharge means write it off or meet it. We approve, you approve we as a, a local authority approve that condition, yeah. then they get a formal consent, it's called call the discharge, mm -hmm. to say conditions X, Y and Z, they've applied for a discharge and they have now been formally discharged. So, so they we, we as a council are satisfied that those conditions are being yeah. met. So I just want to make sure that it's understood. So, you, you, you're yes. clear. Yeah. So the recommendation is to delegate <coughs> grant consent. Do we want to do that? Actually, sorry, Madam Chairman, yeah. the, the recommendation's actually been changed with the latest thing. Is that does that is that the recommendation for the entire um, Chairman, uh, uh, so sorry, uh, no, no, okay. uh, sorry. Uh, you seem to be heading forward. Uh, you want some details about the attenuation pond, uh, uh, some time to consider the landscaping the implications. Mm -hmm. Chairman, if you want to do that, uh, perhaps put to the uh, quick and say defer it for those discussions to have and bring it back to next time. That might be yeah. the, the, the yeah. sort of yeah. going through a lot of it, perhaps unnecessary. Okay. Is that what the committee wishes to do? Yeah? Yes. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll defer it on, uh, on yeah. and ask you about that. So we'll just get together. Would that be coming back to committee? Yes, it will. Yeah. Yes, it will. We'll back come back next time. <laughs> Uh, Chair, the out. intention will be, but if they don't respond in that time, then no, uh, it will be, but it will have to come up back to committee. Yeah. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. All right. Okay. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on now to Fern Bagville. See you again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Have you any updates on the internet? Uh, no, Chairman, from I'm just checking that. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, there's an update report. Uh, sorry, Chairman, I'm getting my wits about me. Uh, LCC are happy with the amendments made. Chairman, there was a, an amendment to the site area. Uh, we were allowed to change things around the access without. Uh, uh, having to uh, ask for a new planning application. So we've gone out to reconsult members of the public on, it's a tweet to, to the Red Age at the start, I don't make a great deal of difference to the application, it just allows them to, to access it better. So Chairman, I don't think we can make a decision uh, formally to approve, uh, it would have to be delegated or brought back to, to, to you as a committee, uh, whilst that three week consultation period uh, is being undertaken. Councillor yes. Tower, I'd rather this come back to uh, the committee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councillor Tower. Um, thanks, Chairman. Um, 
I, I'd like to just say how wonderful it is that, mm. uh, that Hope Technologies want to, uh, to build this facility in Barn Oldswick. Um, so anyone not aware, um, they do have uh, Olympic medal winning bikes that are produced mm. in Barn Oldswick, designed in Barn Oldswick. Um, and we should be welcoming their open mm. arms. Um, Chairman, the, there are a couple of small issues with the development that I would like um, Neil or whoever the, the case offer is to, um, to talk about with the uh, developer. And that's the, uh, the palisade fencing around the perimeter of the, the site. Um, and that could be replaced with a, a green security mesh fencing, um, which would look a lot more appealing and in character with the area. Um, and it's my understanding that um, Hope are already on board with maybe doing that. <coughs> and the other thing, similar to the to the previous application, is um, an above ground attenuation pond instead of a, a sub um, surface. Um, sub. Um, so, so chair, um, I think I would move that we uh, delegate authority. Um, and discuss those those couple of issues there um, with the developers. Chairman, I, I, I would second uh, delegating um, the, the approval uh, to Mr. Watson. And can, can I just preface my remarks? Because, I mean, Hawk Tech um, are, are a, a you know, significant employer in the town. Um, yes, they did manufacture uh, the bikes that um, uh, won loads of gold medals in, in Tokyo. But we need to look at this planning application uh, as if it was from anybody. And we're not favouring for tech because of the, the gold medal winning bikes. Um, but, Chairman, I used to work at this site, um, and I don't like to mention how many years ago it was, but um, I worked at Montex for some considerable time, and just about where the, the parking is on that hand that you can see, um, uh, I used to stack pallets um, with my forklift. And uh, where the building is, is being built, uh, I used to unload uh, zillions of miles of yarn, um, either uh, uh, raw uh, nylon or um, treated, you know, so that sort of gone through the pin on and all that sort of stuff. So I've got a long history with Fernbank Mill, but also um, going back before then. Um, uh, Tom Whip, uh, my father rather than my son, used to have all the hemp pens that ran uh, along, there's a field in between and then we had the hemp pens uh, in the valley bottom there. So um, my association or my knowledge of the site goes back donkey's years and up until reasonably recently it was uh, a very um, busy uh, mill uh, with several, several occupants and the consequent traffic up and down uh, Fernbank Avenue. The mill was demolished um, and that traffic largely disappeared and I appreciate that the residents have got used to it being rather quieter although they've got concrete clifford uh, up on the hillside there with the consequent traffic that that generates and the noise that that generates. So it's not like the, the, the site doesn't have a history of quite intensive use. It's a, a site that in the past has employed hundreds and hundreds of people and all the consequent uh, swings and froids. And it's been quiet for a few years. I'm not saying it's going to be noisy in the future, but obviously creating a, an employment site there 
is going to mean that people are coming and going and there will be the activity that um, such a site generates. And I think it's entirely reasonable that residents are sensitive uh, to that, the prospect of that happening and can understand uh, their misgiving. Um, in terms of the application, I have to say that the landscaping scheme that's been submitted, which I've gone through in considerable detail, is the best that I have ever seen. I have not seen any planning applications that uh, has such a high specification landscaping. And the attention to detail, the species, the variety, uh, the way that uh, it's planned out is, I have to say, it's impeccable. And, and I cannot fault that. I think, Chairman, the uh, Palisade fencing is entirely inappropriate. Uh, uh, Hope Tech on the site at Carrefour Mill have the green security mesh, and, and I think that they would be more than happy to have that same green security mesh rather than Palisade fencing. It's far more attractive, it disappears into the background, it disappears into the vegetation and um, it's much more appropriate and it's what uh, really the site deserves. So okay. I'm, I'm back on 100% what Councillor Tom has said in okay. terms of green mesh. Councilor the Tom. other thing... Oh sorry, I thought you finished. Yeah, on. Thank you, Chairman. The other thing that um, I think Hope would be receptive to is creating the biodiversity that a, a pond would provide. And I think it's rather unfortunate that the uh, requirements of, I think, the County Council from reading the report mean that that's been um, uh, omitted from the uh, most up-to-date plans. Chairman, I accept that uh, because of the very slight changes in the red edges, which you can see on the plan that I highlighted, that this has to be reconsulted upon. Uh, unless there are any uh, points that uh, uh, come out from those very minor changes to the site boundaries, then uh, I think that we ought to be delegating approval. We ought to be uh, uh, allowing the company to, to take this forward. I think the buffer between the residents and the new building, because of the, the really good way that the landscaping has been done, uh, will be excellent. There's just one further thing, and I, I don't know whether the company would be amenable to this or not, but the Town Council, Mike Whittingham, uh, will be able to, to comment on this. But I think the Town Council, in their comments, uh, suggested that perhaps low level lighting along that undulating path uh, would be uh, appropriate and um, I wonder whether we could raise that with the company as well uh, to see whether that could be included in the scheme or not. But I, I back uh, delegating granting consent and let, letting them um, get forward with this. Okay. Yes, uh, I agree with everything what Councillor said and what can um, be but I was uh, round the uh, mill long before you, David. My mother used to work in the mill there. She's not as old as that. I'm older than you, David. I could, and also, you know, is it really grandfather Tom that used to uh, chase all those youngsters away from his chickens? <laughs> yes, Probably. happy days those were, but I tried a second or a two more days. So. Okay, so I'm quite happy we do a great grandmother said. Subject, Subject to, to the issues, the issues that have been raised. Yeah, everybody in favour? Yeah, okay, that's fast. Alright, moving on to the next one uh, conversion of existing mill, south of mill, public road, south of mill. Okay, who wants to kick off on this one? Yeah, uh, Chairman, I, I, I mean, the, the new owners of the mill got off to a shaky start uh, in terms of their activities. 
Uh, but I, I think that this application is an improvement on the planning permission that was previously granted, granted to the mill, which is expired now. And um, uh, you know the, the small, uh, the fewer, uh, the reduced number of apartments, call them apartments rather than flats, uh, I think is is beneficial. And um, I can't see what's not to like. So I would be happy to move approval. Second. Yeah, certainly not. Anybody else? No. Okay. Thank no, you. I just point Sorry. out. Sorry. Pre a previous meeting I pointed out that nothing was swiftness mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Many of the was that. And there's been 15 uh, nests this year successful things. So X number of X number of them. And it's kind of been there that they do put sufficient mm -hmm. for swift boxes. It's, it's Can we have that sufficient for each end? The biggest yeah. problem is, is what time you give you to do it. Because if the stuff's the rear, obviously yeah. we stay, yeah. we go by the way that, you can't do that. So, I do not I can't imagine doing a bad survey, but it's certainly a bit of Yeah, well it's already in the condition. But from so the Southport Parish Council and the rest of the point of view, the sooner the better, mm -hmm. because the mill will deteriorate. You can hear three four of electrical wires hanging down from it. Yeah. It's being used for storage of wire goods, which goodness knows why it yeah. was. So it needs sorting out. So we'll the sooner that. the better. Yeah, okay. Chairman, so, in, in the light of what uh, uh, Kevin has just said, could we amend condition 3 to incorporate the requirement for the boxes to be um, installed at, during the correct season? Which would be, I don't know. Well, the year, the year, the year on the 14th of May, the spring, the spring, yeah, the spring, the spring, the spring, and they've gone by the 11th of August. So, so can, can we condition that that they won't fall the 14th of May? Uh, I'm just thinking uh, through that, Chairman, because the conversion here is going to take 8, 10, 4 months, isn't it? So, yeah. but it's a provision of the boxes that's. Uh, because uh, the, the protection of the wildlife and countryside acts legislation anyway, uh, the, the, the habitats, etc. So, Chair, uh, yes, I, I'll write something in. If you approve yeah. it, subject to amendment to that condition, I'll yeah. write something in about timings. Yeah, okay. Um, thanks, Chair. Just um, through you to Neil, um, could this also apply to fat boxes? Yeah. Uh, that's what that'd be yeah.
allocation. So it's not on the map I looked at. But, uh, what do you mean it's not on the map? No, no, no. Okay. It's not the map I looked at as a red line around the Hubbard Court area that's part of uh, yeah. and Guild Church is, is outside, yeah. but my map might not be wrong. Your map's wrong, man. Well, it could be. I'm not, I'm not going to fall out over it, but... Well, uh, can, we, can we clarify that? Please clarify. Uh, before we allocate it, which ward it is in? I can give you 100% certainty that it's in the court. Well, we'll just go it Well, no, let's approve it as part of the EV court's allocation. We'll, we'll approve it subject to knowing which word it's in. That's the best way to go about it. Then we're sure. But we know which word it is in. Well, you're saying you do, but we're not 100 percent sure. Well, I can't help the fact that I won't say you're ignorant, but um, well, you say it's, it's, it's an area you represent, and you should do it. It's not. <laughs> I don't believe you just said that. You no, don't. I don't know. <laughs> I know, but well, we'll get it clarified. Oh, dear. So you bring it back to the No, 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 well, it's, it's, it's we, we're agreeing it's subjected to finding out which ward it is, yeah. whichever ward it's for. Exactly. It's yeah. Yeah. Three, the three, yeah. Okay. Uh, right, the next one installation of an outdoor gym for the town council. What do you want to do with this one? Yes, Councillor. Um, thank you, Chair. Sorry, Chairman, this flies getting on the nerves. Um, yeah, um, I think it was made clear at the last uh, time this was brought up that £10,000 um, wasn't acceptable. Um, I think I would move then that we um, go for £5,000 as a more um, acceptable amount um, and uh, approve this, uh, this grant. Um, there's interest from members of the public who approach the town council asking for the provision of outdoor gyms um, and I think it is uh, quite appropriate that this uh, area committee to provide capital for facilities um, for people to use. Oh, and is Councillor Adams still in favour of this? Yeah. Chairman, we, we, we can't say whether well, Councillor Adams happens. is in favour. She's, unfortunately, she's unwell and she's not here. Mm. Well, from last, well, I should change the mind from last time because she was in favour of it last time. Well, Chairman, we're dancing on the head of a pin here today, yeah. aren't we? On, yeah, the last, on the last, on the last, the last one that we've just discussed, mm -hmm. you were more than happy for spending in a court's ward to come out of the Von Oldswick ward allocation. Um, and, and to our mind, it doesn't matter about whether one particular council or not, it's whether the majority of the committee agrees with the, the, the funding they provided. Um, okay. So I'm, I second Councillor Tom's proposition the the committee allocate five thousand pounds towards the, the scheme as a as a whole. Councillor Purcell? No, I won't be doing it. I won't be uh, supporting it. Okay. So it, it has got to come out of the balance of budget. Chen, on the last thing, thing, on the, the, the Gilgar. We've, we've just and the Gilgar. Council, we've, we the, have uh, decided on that, that it, whichever ward it is in, it will come out of. Whether it be the Evening Court or the Bon Oswick Ward. But you were more than happy for Bon Oswick Ward councillors to, to thought, fund it. Because we think it was in the Bon Oswick Ward. If we're wrong, right. we're wrong. And we'll hold his hand up to that. That's what we're going to find out. So whichever ward it is, it's going to go with. So this this one is in Barn Oldswick. Do you want it to come out of the Barn Oldswick? Your, your two allocations. Gentlemen, part of it should come out of the Eby Courts Ward allocation because people who live in Courts Ward will use the facilities in just the same way that people who live in Barn Oldswick will use the facilities at Guild Church. 
Okay. Um, you know, for completely different uses. I'm not going to have one of those again. Right, we put it to the vote. The proposal is £5,000 out of the crazy budget, what you are saying. I think you propose it after yeah. the Yeah, yeah. Okay. All those in favour? All those against? That's lost. Okay, move on to the next one. Improvements to Barnold's and Pensioners Club Centre. That's it, Sam. Can I open that, please? Yeah. Are you in favour of that one? Yeah. Sure she is moving that the committee of Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll second that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So All those in favour? I'm in favour, Chairman. Right. Um, Anyone again? Can I just ask, is it limited to people who live in Donald's Wick Ward to use the pensioners centre, or people who live in the court part of Donald's Wick, can they use the pensioners centre? We're moving on, Councillor Wick. We're just being affected. Yeah. It's all collaborative, aren't we? Act 8, Eastman Road footpath. Uh, do we have any updates on this?
I just think that if the wall needs repairing, it's a bit foolish to repair the footpath. Sure. And the wall fall clarify. Off, and the, the wall fall down on the left. If, if I can clarify Tom's position, I mean, what he's saying is, yes, sure. is £1,400 pending the repair of the wall. <coughs> if the wall isn't repaired, then it's sent back to this committee for approval. What does the committee think about that? What do you want to say? Seconded. You've seconded it, yeah. Chairman, it, it, I mean, it's quite simple, really. It's just that one has a bond will be allocated, and if the property owner doesn't repair the wall, it won't be spent. I'm not going to do that on the You have to go on. Okay. So, all those in favour? That's good. Number nine. You've got a, a report in front of you. Things are moving forward on this. I'm going to ask to add on it. Well, Chairman, it's good that we've got our uh, programme approved now, so uh, there's always a risk when you don't have that. So I think it's a good job done by Mike Williams and all uh, the, the other members, etc., involved in it. So it's good. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to, to ask through you to, to Mr Watson, if there are any decisions that we need to take or uh, our, our, you know, we're just implementing the decisions that we've previously taken. Yeah. 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 Um, there's, a, there's an issue that's come up in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the new installation and uh, I included um, Mr Watson in an email earlier today, so he had sight of it. Uh, but the... Sorry, it's difficult to sort of explain this in a nutshell. Um, Pendle Council is purchasing items and ordinarily Pendle Council would add those items to Pendle Council's asset register. However, in the case of uh, some of the items that are being purchased here, are you uh, talking about the planters? I'm talking about up the pole planters and uh, separately, the, which is being funded from uh, an allied pot, there's some uh, uh, debts that are, are being purchased. Yeah. Yeah. So, those, in Von Oswick's case, are going to be in the custody of Von Oswick Town Council and properly for both insurance and asset register purposes ought to be the Town Council's. Um, it doesn't, it's not exactly the same in here because the work in here is more re revenue uh, maintenance rather than the purchase of new stuff. Uh, and it's clear that Mike Williams is, is acting on the basis of these will remain the property of Pendle Council, therefore the, you know, they need to be on Pendle Council's asset register, Pendle Council's insurance. But in practice, it's all the town councils. So the, it, it would make sense for there to be a community asset transfer of the respective items of kit or up the ball planters and transfer the stuff to the respective oh. town councils. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to propose that the committee supports that yeah. request. Yeah, okay. Uh, Chairman, uh, from the other part, which is uh, and the part I don't say issues with that, we just have to be clear, and I have, uh, I've asked Mike, but we didn't get a chance to speak uh, uh, since council we passed the question, or whether there are any restrictions on the grant funding that the panel has to own it. So I don't think there are, but I don't want to tell the committee that it's, it's a free hand. So, uh, Chairman, we'll get back because we don't want to fall foul of, of, of the no. funding and have to repay it. No, that's fine. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So, previously, we're just not going to be able to leave the uh, stage, you know, and smile if I'm going to go to the street tomorrow. 
Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That could be storage. Yeah. Well, uh, it gives you something to do tomorrow. Chairman, yeah. sorry. Can, can I just be clear what Mr. Walker's just said? You're going to take it from Fleet Street and bring it to Barley? No, I'm accepting delivery of it at Fleet Street tomorrow. Storage. I don't know where it's going to go after that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Chairman, this is, this is, I mean, part of the nightmare is Mike Williams dealing with it at Pendle, somebody else dealing with it at the Town Council, and never the twit shall meet. The reason why it was redirected to Fleet Street was because the whole year was bringing it on, was it Monday? We're on Tuesday now, so it must have been yesterday. And neither myself nor Councillor Tom Wick were there to do the uh, donkey work of actually lifting it off the wagon, which we would have done. It was Tomorrow, I'm more than happy to lift it off the wagon um, because I'll be available. Um, so we're going to deliver it to Fleet Street because of an almighty... Can it know, not be delivered straight to the City Hall? I, I wouldn't think I wouldn't like to change. Chair because there was no, we were unable, yeah, been unable to make a delivery. So. Yeah, I don't know the best we can to yeah. but, but, but can we, we, can, could we, we change it? Yeah. Chairman, uh, given, I mean, the reason why it went to Fleet Street, or we thought it had gone to Fleet Street already, was because the, we, we could <coughs> take delivery on Monday. No, I and, and, but we expected it to be in Fleet Street, and we're more than happy to get delivered to Fleet Street. We can marry the lives and shortly yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, okay. Then let's move on. All right. Item ten. Uh, back Myrtle Grove, Clifford Street. What you want to do this one? It's going to cost forty nine and a half grand. Do you want to approach LCC and fund it from LCC? Yeah, council. Uh, thanks, chair. Um, we we discussed this um, when we met about the um, the the leisure centre and the issues having with parking there. Um, since then there was the suggestion of having the, a school uh, drop-off pickup um, in this car park. Um, and it seems to me that the, the plans might not be adequate for that. Um, and these have been drawn up before that suggestion was put on the table. Um, so I think I would uh, defer this item and ask for it to be amended with a, a, a greater space for drop off pick up for the school cafe. Okay, certainly. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and also, when that comes back, I do think we need to consult mm -hmm. the residents um, in the surrounding area as well. Okay. Um, especially with the, uh, with the through connection from, uh, from Clifford Street through to the garage site. Um, as that might not be uh, available or it might be, I don't know. Yeah, that's good first. All agreed. Yeah? Okay. Right, Act 11, Trees at Ponda. Do we have a little break on this? We do. Chair, I suppose I was to make the same. There was uh, an email sent down this afternoon which is uh, taking some advice from the uh, council's legal advice. Um, therefore, and back on information that has been presented to the point, the council's insurers and obviously consideration of the report from Bowen Tree Consultancy and their strong advice as it has it, as it, as been put into the messages that the committee is to approve the app application to remove these trees. Uh, they go on to say that there is no only issue of potential criminal liability for the council the damage to person's property can result from the failure to do so. No, that is a good enough reason in itself to grant the application, but also the issue of the position of our insurers in the last look at the case. Um, the council's insurers have indicated that will not provide cover if such an event occurred and that premiums in the future will be adverse to affected because of the council's failure to appreciate the uh, risk appropriately in these circumstances. Um, either way, there are potentially serious adverse consequences for the council, including lack of insurance and wider financial implications, which, in the view of the legal advisory, is that they are an acceptable risk if the trees are not removed. And quite apart from the harm to any third parties, which is entirely vulnerable, and most important consideration of all. Okay. Thank you. Did you want to put the council things for? Well, I'm very, very disappointed. Uh, 
couldn't say how long the trees were going to be there. Nobody could. You couldn't stand there and say they were safe. You couldn't say they were unsafe. And I remember standing before them, sitting in shoes. I understood it to be about just 20 or not. That's where I understand it's a number of council. It's a number of council, it's not. No. I mean, there isn't a council here going to stay that uh, they're going to risk it. I mean, that's that's yeah. the thing. It seems as though people have been forced into a position by an insurer. Which, I said, it's very, very disappointing. I've had a couple of emails this evening. It came at short notice, so we can't, can't really give a you know, like a really deep, considered opinion. One of the barber cultures say, yes, you're arguing whether it's 20, I think it's what. Why was the question asked? Is the question asked on a daily basis regarding trees in parks, regarding trees here, there and everywhere? There's 31 trees more dangerous than the ones that come down. So I just wondered how, they, how they, what was the reasoning behind going to the insurers about that? Really, Jim, uh, up to, to Liam uh, Johnson uh, uh, about this today. One of his comments, oh, I've spoken to him quite a lot about it, was it's the location. One of the, the things it was right because of its location next to the highway, and that it's, if it was in the middle of a field somewhere, the risk of well, having that. There's a traffic pass. That, that, that's, that's why the. Uh, well, we've, a, we've, we've asked a bachelor of science who's done three years in, at university. That's the Chris opinion we paid for that as an authority, as a parish council. I don't know about this ball and thing, I don't know their credentials. No, we're ask, we've asked for somebody to come with a thing, and it was, if that was the case, the question should have been asked in the first place. Mr. Johnson, we're fully aware the trees were dangerous. It's cost us a lot of money, a lot of time, and for, no, for nothing whatsoever, just to say the trees have come down. When I was reading this afternoon, was saying that you could prune the trees. Uh, there's obviously a, a lot of things being learned about this, I should have that. And we cut down everything to begin with. It's advanced a bit, and some of the older trees are coming through the ash dieback with judicious pruning, and they survive it. And I can understand, I'm fully aware, the last thing we want is somebody killed. Family driving to school and they wiped out. It's the last thing anybody wants. Do you want to come back? No, uh, no I, I will uh, hold my counsel to that, Chairman. But uh, uh, it, it is. We've got two sets of, of professionals who are, don't agree to be, to be honest. And they've spoken and uh, we've had correspondence between each other about uh, uh, the parameters they've set for it. And, you know, for example, why one would think the trees could live for 30 years and other sets of uh, consultants uh, think that it will, wouldn't leave, live for five years because of, of the ash diebacks. So we've got two sets of, of consultants, Chairman, who don't readily see the same for the same trees, but uh, in order to try and look at, at it from a, a legal perspective, we had to show our insurers, uh, and that's what we've come back with, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. I, um, I, I really struggle to understand this cover your back culture that we have. If, if we look at the road through to North Road from here, and I travelled it twice before the, the, the meeting uh, going to be coming back, um, the trees that we're talking about at Klondike which are on Pendle Council land, are probably the best ash trees along that route. You go further along and there are innumerable trees with big boughs overhanging the highway that have considerably more ash dieback than the ones that we're talking about. Now, if you were looking at the risk to members of the public, then your attention would be drawn to the trees that are in that poorer condition 
uh, with bigger limbs over the highway than the ones that happen to be in Pendle Council's ownership. But that's not what's happened. For some reason, there's been a focus on these trees. Now, whether that's a neighbouring landowner, um, you know, who's applying pressure or uh, flagging up concerns, I, I don't know. But uh, to my mind, it's not acceptable for us to, to cut down trees on the basis that, well, there might be a problem and the insurer says we won't be insured. If we start going down that route, we're going to cut every tree down in the borough because there is a risk with every tree in the borough that the branch might blow off. Um, there might be a greater risk or a lesser risk, but there's still a risk. There might be a risk that a tree blows over. And, you know, you've got to do a, a risk assessment of, of, of the conditions and, and, you know, the suitability, the location and everything else. And here, it looks like the risk assessment has come up with something perverse, which is saying these trees need to come down, but those 100 yards down the road, in worse condition, nobody's back in their mind is about. So it, it all seems wrong to me, and, and I'm not advocating that the trees down the road are cut down, uh, but I do think we ought to get as priorities right in terms of which trees have to be cut down and, and which trees don't have to be cut down. So I, I am not at all happy with this. Um, and, you know, it, why the insurers have, have been involved, uh, you know, if there's a dispute between one set of consultants and another set of consultants, I'd bring a third set of consultants in as a tiebreaker. But um, we're, we're, we're getting, we're in a bind now. And, um, you know, it, it'll all be covering that and, and do it. I, I think we ought to boot this up to policy and resources because I think it, it's a, the, beyond the trees at Pondi, there is a, a principle here about um, how risk averse Pendle Council is and are we really going to get a chainsaw now and cut every damn tree down across the borough because that's the way that we're heading and I don't agree with it. Chair, can I just ask one final thing? Yeah. I've just had from a throwaway comment earlier on that uh, our tree officer is, is leaving. Mm. Um, how, how soon is that? And end of the month. End of the month. So is he going to pass to his new... Yeah. Okay. Are you able to say anything uh, He's going to National Park. All right. Yeah. Very good. Dream job. Well, unfortunately, we're in this day and age, we live in a suit society. We're mm. not going to work from that. It's not good. So, what do you want to do with this? Yeah, do you want to defer it? You're proposing it, we defer it and send it up to policy and resources. Well, I'm supposing that we refer it to policy and resources because of the wider implications for uh, mature trees across the borough. Okay, I second that, Madam Secretary. Second that, Chair. Sorry, I don't want to do that. The council. Uh, Annually assesses any tree that he has. Um, should assess. Should, should, should assess. That's a job. We have a fact. Tree yes. management bent on the plan. And this is why this has come up. These trees are on the uh, plan. Yes. The assessment is very good. It's about four and a half. That would be the inspector properly. And they could fail even, up, even this evening. But, Okay, so it's been moved and seconded that we that we refer this up to policy and resources with any recommendation that they look at the policy or whatever the risk assessment. I, 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 I think Pendle Council, at the centre, ought to make a decision, and that ought to be based on the implications of the route that we started to go down. Okay. Are we going to cut every tree down? Okay, alright then, so I'll move on. Item 12, flooding in Barlick. Sorry, Chairman. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sure we did. 
Yeah, oh, sorry, Jennifer. Sorry, she seconded it. Sorry. Right, okay then, so we vote on that, but it's referred up to policy and resources. All those in favour? All those against? Okay, that's carried. Right, move on then. Item 12, flooding in Barwick. Thank you, Rick. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm sure we're all aware about the, uh, the flooding events that happened in Barnard and the uh, yeah. multiple businesses that were affected. Um, I think we as a committee need to do, need to have representations to various bodies um, to try and get some of the issues resolved um, around what happened. Um, one of the major things which was commented on a lot is um, the amount of gullies that were chalked up weren't taking the water and in some cases um, did contribute greatly to the property's flooding, um, which wouldn't have happened if LCC had kept up their regular maintenance of gullies. Um, and I'm sure we're again all aware of how long it takes for a, a reported block gully to actually be sucked. Um, or, or not as the case may be. Um, so I think that's that's key issue number one. Um, a second issue which is a bit more specific is um, Robinson Cold. Um, there's been a couple of properties there which have had flooding um, to, to, a, to a bad degree. Um, and it's the residents' belief that that was caused by the overflow channel which runs along the back side of their properties um, being choked up with uh, weeds, vegetation, debris, um, a shed which has been built over it. Um, and the residents have took it upon themselves to, to clear about what they can, um, but I think there needs to be looked into how that's managed in the future, how we can prevent flooding of both properties going forward. Um, and etc. Um, what you want to do? Well, um, I'm not sure what the answer to that is, honest, but I need to figure it out. Well, I think so. We, we, we need a report on the, the, the escape channel adjacent to Robinson Fold, which is still in the ownership of the developers of Robinson Fold as to how that shall be regularly maintained so as not to pose a risk of flooding. And what about the gullet cleaning? LCC. LCC, yeah. Which has been like that for a donkey years. Yeah. I think Councillor Whip's got a, a long list of things. Yeah, he, he, he was on the ground during the, the flooding incident and he, He's got a long list of stuff that um, needs action. Yeah. Well, we could take him one at a time, or um, you know, we can go through the whole lot. Yes, Madam Chairman, I've got two phone calls about the flooding on Robinson Falls. I went round. The illness lays on a lot of it uh, for uh, Orchard Holdings, I do believe it is. The trash screen, I do believe. I emailed you, Mr. Watson and Jason, I think it is, that's taking on the sorting it out. The trash cream is inadequate for me. I've also been on to LCC about the gullies down there. They're sort of going to come out and sort that out. The other thing is we've got this, uh, like a cabin overhanging the gullet, encroached over the gully. I mean, that shouldn't be allowed either. I've also seen, uh, I mean, we've been in contact, so I have been on the ground sorting things out with that, and also with LCC, as far as grades go. Uh, I won't go into it because uh, we're on the camera, and I don't want uh, any work to be stopped, but uh, the worst of them dropped down one of the grades in the town square and blocked it, and LCC came out the following morning to uh, release all the event that was blocking the grades. So I'm going to ask it saying on the subject. Thank you, Councillor Dalton. Yeah, thanks, Chair. <coughs> Just specifically about uh, gully maintenance, LCC do not proactively maintain any gullies, unfortunately. Uh, this has been a 
fight for, for quite some time. In fact, it was made quite clear to me, how, uh, was, I, I raised the issue uh, at Preston, um, concerning the issues around uh, Van Oswick and, uh, and the difference between being proactive and reactive, which is what LCCR, they respond to people uh, reporting uh, uh, block bullies and, uh, uh, and act accordingly. And it was made quite clear to me that they would not go back in time um, in terms of a regular maintenance regime like they used to do. If, <coughs> the good news from that comment, however, is that they intend to increase the, uh, uh, and, and review the way they do the reactive uh, responses. The old thing where they come out to the one gully but don't clear the next one to it or a tandem on it. Uh, but that, that 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 was you know that was gone into some detail at that we had a face-to-face -face meeting with a cabinet member over it. But that was made quite clear. They don't maintain, um, they react, um, but they accept I think that you know there are some weaknesses in that in, in that system and they want to increase their ability to react quicker and wider across particular these lengths. Um, with the sheer number of, of machines that are available. So that, that's, that's something we discussed quite, you know, straight after the, the event, which was um, a bit like the, the flood, I guess, um, in, 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 its, in its intensity. Okay, thanks. Thanks for um, Well, I, I want to contribute to talking about LCC. Mike says that they do not proactively maintain any, any bullets. Well, frankly, I am astonished because it's only within the last two years that Lancashire County Council rejigged their contracts and they um, have contracted with a company called Sapphire and Sapphire are uh, one of the biggest um, drain maintenance companies that there are with huge jetters and uh, small gully suckers and what Lancashire County Council did, and it is a couple of years ago, uh, they contracted all the routine work to be done by Sapphire and the, uh, they were routinely visiting gullies and they actually came to West Craven when the contract started, and I saw them in action, and probably took some pictures as well uh, to, to prove the point. But uh, they came to West Craven when that contract started, routinely sucking out gullies and making sure uh, that they covered everyone that they could. Now, there were a lot missed, but uh, that routine maintenance was being carried out, and I'm astonished that uh, after less than two years, Lancashire County Council appears, on what Mike's reporting, to have kicked that into touch. The situation was, Sapphire were doing the routine work, Lancashire County Council were doing the firefighting and the reactive work. Um, time was when there was a gully sucker here in Pendle, um, Mr Walker can probably remember that, um, and we had a dedicated gully sucker that, that went round and, and did all the, the, the bullets. When we had the flooding six years ago, it transpired that Lancashire County Council only had two gully suckers for the whole of East Lancashire, one of which was broken down. So we had one gully sucker that was covering five or six districts. So, you know, you, you, the capacity was reduced accordingly. Uh, the fact is, the gullies that are getting reported and, and reactive work should be taking place are not getting sorted out. And I can mention a few on Fernley, uh, Fernley Avenue where uh, they've been reported. I've seen a gully sucker, uh, the, the next but one uh, that's gully. Just, that's just what I've said. No, 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 no. I have reported gullies on Fernley Avenue 
I've seen the Gully Supper come and I thought, oh great, they're going to do that fully. Um, there's actually two. Um, and they've gone to one just down the road and they've done something with it, which to my mind is working perfectly well. And they completely missed the ones that have been reported and they still remain unattended. And I took a picture and I'll show you a picture of one that I took the other day. Yes, okay. But the point is, it, it's not being done adequately. And the firefighting isn't being done adequately. They ought to respond uh, to getting the ones done in EAB, following uh, flooding. They ought to respond following the flooding in Donaldswick. The water brings everything down into the yeah, gullies and blocks them up. So why aren't they going around systematically cleaning out all the gullies that are blocked? But Councillor Tomwick, as well as proposing that we ask the county council to up the gully in, talked about the uh, uh, escape chapel adjacent to Robinson Fold and I'd like to go back to that one. Uh, Jennifer well, mentioned. Well, ask your report to come back. Yes, no. Jennifer mentioned the trash screen in front of the culverts. Now, Tom can speak for himself, but he visited Robinson Fold when the flooding was taking place. Uh, did you take pictures, Tom? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was there was no issue with the trash screen um, during the flooding event. Um, the culvert itself was taking more trash than the time. Um, and judging by the um, the grass on either side of the of the, uh, the channel there at um, Robinson Falls, um, the water level didn't encroach um, anywhere near the amount it would need to burst its banks. Um, the the, the, the working theory of where the water came from for um, went into this game of the channel is over from the road um, that runs parallel um, Fernbank mm -hmm. Avenue where the water has come down there at such a pace and <coughs> all the gullies have been blocked and so that water has then overrun the land into the game of channel and then into the properties. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and I do have more um, flooding items. Um, the next one is, is Crow Nest, um, the industrial estate. Um, there's, a, there's a beck that runs through Crow Nest, um, and I attended it while it was flooding. Um, and the, the, the trash green there at Crow Nest um, has recently been cleaned out. It's been kept on top of by Gareth, who himself has gone in with his wellies and, and dredged it out. Um, but what was happening on the flooding night was it was blocked further upstream, vegetation had got into the beck, um, a chucked it up like a dam, and the water was overrunning the, the banks further up uh, and then into the commercial properties there. Um, so I think we need a, a report back um, on the maintenance schedule of that beck to, uh, to properly clear it out upstream. Um, can I second that one, Chairman? Okay. Um, the the Cronest uh, units, uh, several of them flooded on the, the 9th of September. And it's exactly as Councillor Tomwick said, uh, again, I've got pictures on my phone, the, the, the water came out of the water course higher up than the culvert uh, entrance. And uh, back in 2016, so it's five years ago, we got together housing when they were building Scotland Close, we got the developers, to put a machine in there and actually scrape out all the, 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 the vegetation that was blocking the, the yeah. water course. And uh, I, I think to just chart more what uh, uh, Councillor Tomlin was proposing, that we ought to be resolving to request together housing to clear out the vegetation okay. uh, on the stretch of water course that they are responsible for due to their riparian ownership. Okay, next one. Yeah. Um, the next one is uh, Rolls Royce Leisure Centre. Um, that was um, encroached by water during the event. Um, the, the exact cause isn't um, fully understood. 
Um, I can tell you exactly what I was there. Right. So, yeah. yeah, well, I'll let you come in on that. Um, but according to Gareth, when we had a site visit there, um, the drainage network, um, which all the catchment runs underneath Rolls Royce, um, and it's a, it's a choke point for all the air that drains down to that little spot, um, is, is, is completely inadequate. Um, when it was first put in, it was put in as workers' houses. Um, and it wasn't come to any particular standard, um, certainly doesn't stand up to modern day. I think we just need um, to, to look into upping that potentially. Okay. If, I, if, if I might just come in on that one, I was down at uh, Northwest Lake trying to help stop that flooding. Um, the, water, the case for the Northwest Lake was, was on Coast Lane. There's a dip in Coast mm. Lane as you go down, and the, 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 the gullies down Coast Lane were blocked. So the water was just coming down into that dip and then as it reached the dip it's right in the driveway entrance of all this leisure so it reached the dip everything was blocked and it was just going straight down the driveway straight through the door into the club into the kitchen it was probably three or four yeah. inches deep inside yeah. um, <coughs> yeah. okay anyone chairman on, on on that one uh, Councillor Tom Wickham, sorry. We've got all the info for that. We've just said it all. No. <sighs> Councillor Tom Wick and I visited with Gareth Aspic, Pender Council's drainage engineer. We discussed the issue. Um, uh, I've also discussed it with Bernie, uh, uh, who manages. Bernie. Yes. Are you, are you going to let us speak without interruption, Chairman, or are you going to... Can on? Right, thank you. Um, I discussed it with Bernie. Bernie was thinking, well, we could build a wall across and, and, and stop the water from coming in. Uh, but I, I, I said, well, you needed to take professional advice on that because it might not necessarily help. The, the issue there is that there is a, a highway gully, there is a an inspection chamber, and if the water builds up on Corks Lane, it might be a problem for other residents, but if the water builds up on Corks Lane, it could pressurise the system, and then the water won't come through the wall, but it will go through the drains and then come back up on the opposite side of the wall. So it, it's something that needs a good court of looking over. But I think the point of Tom Tomwick's proposal was that the, the network needs examining at that low point, as Councillor Whittingham pointed out, so as to be capable of taking the amount of water that's coming at it. So it might be a United Utilities problem, it might be a um, riparian owners problem, which, in which case it's back to old droids. But the, there's several things that need to be looked at, and it's the network capacity that needs to be looked at, and that goes back to what was point I was making earlier on, that the sewage network in that area cannot cope with what there is at the moment. So if another 14 houses is to get put into it, then um, that could tip. The, the, the balance the wrong way, whether we can do that, anything about that or not, is another thing. Okay, that's it. Um, so the, uh, the next one is um, um, adjacent to Aldi and the Rolls Royce car park. Um, there's, a, there's a culvert and sewer intersection. Um, and uh, during, during the night, um, that sewer there was surcharging out onto the road and then going over the bridge of the Beck into Victory Park, not into the Beck, over the bridge, um, um, and then flowing down along the, 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 the track there and into the Julius football pitch, um, which is not nice, but uh, I mean really that, that um, sewer there um, does surcharge on quite a few occasions. Um, I don't know if it needs upsizing or... Uh, so it needs inspecting, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. 
Another mm. major one is uh, the Greyhound. Um, that had water coming through. Um, I mean, I don't know exactly what happened with the Greyhound. It wasn't there. Um, I was told, but I forgot. Yeah. Chairman, the, the, the Greyhound had water ingress from the park through the back door, which was with one point of entry, but also the, um, the cellar was affected and uh, that uh, could well have come from the front of the property. There's been some work carried out recently uh, as part of the uh, LCC requirement for the access into the new development at the rear and question mark like, you know, has that changed the, uh, the, the way in which the water flows past the building? It has been sandbagged previously there, so there is a, probably a long-standing problem. But it, it's the water flowing down Manchester Road that might uh, have, have affected the cellar. The, I understand that the publicans have got a floodgate for the back door, which might hold off the water coming in from the back. Um, but the, you know, it's, it's a public network uh, needing changing so as to allow uh, the water to get away without going in. Okay. Um, another issue is. Um, have you got. To the north. Can I just ask, have you got any more? Yeah. We've, we've got as many as. as uh, well, Chairman, there, were, there, were, there was dozens of properties flooded in Bonnolfi on the 9th of September. Are we going to try and take action to reduce the risk of these properties getting flooded again? Or are you wanting to stay, get the meeting over Not and brush over these way. things? All I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion is, is obviously you've got quite a lot more. Right? So would it not be advisable that we, we have a meeting with... Uh, Mr. Walker or Scott Waller and go around on also with all this and you can properly highlight them and then we can fetch reports back next to the, to the next meeting. Chairman, Councillor Tom Wick and I have been round with Gareth Aspey picking up these issues and talking about what we can do about it. Tonight we're in the West Raven Area Committee put in resolutions forward as to what we think might help reduce the risk of flooding in the future. If you don't want to discuss uh, reducing that flood risk, well, fair enough. But well, certainly I do. I don't want to see more people flooded. Nobody does. Right, well, let's discuss the issues that we are aware of and try and get the ball rolling to get those issues resolved. But if you've already spoken and been round with people, then surely a report should come back. Well, Chairman, we are talking about it here tonight at committee. The fact that we've talked about it to officers outside this meeting is not relevant. We are talking about this committee making resolutions, making decisions, Let's explore this, let's go to the, those people, let's tackle United Utilities, let's tackle Lancashire County Council, let's tackle who we can to try and solve these problems. And if you're not wanting to solve problems, Go shout the council away, because I can shout just as well, much as you, there's carry no on need then. for it. Let's I mean, carry on discussing things on instead of, let, let's carry on discussing the issues that need to be discussed. Yes, Madam Chairman, I'm coming in. Now, I'm rather annoyed with Pendle Council, especially this Gareth Astray. I emailed, I emailed, and I got an email back from him, but it didn't come back to me properly. Same with Jason, he hasn't come back to me with anything conclusive. And as far as I'm concerned, it always seems to come back to these two, which they're there, Astray's there with them, same with the other officers, they're going with them, but when I ask for something to be done, it seems to be thrown in the uh, corner and forgotten about. Jason hasn't even got back to me about uh, uh, Robinson Fall. Uh, the other one never got back to me at all. I've got the emails at all. I've been in touch with Lancashire County Council. We can all go around and find faults. I suggest you stop this shouting and start working together and stop 
working against one another. You're not going to get it. And we as a West Craven Area Committee, we should all work together and we should all go out and see these sites together. I'm not bothered whether you've been out with your wellies on on the night. I've been out. I've seen flooded people. I've been on Raynor Road again. The sandbags are still out there. Why do them shopkeepers not take them sandbags in and take them back down to where they belong? I'm sorry, Madam Chairman, but this is becoming political. <laughs> Right. Can we carry on, Chair? Yeah. We'll try and solve the problems and work together yeah. as Councillor Purcell says. Come with. Carry on. Um, lots of gifts yeah. um, There's a culvert that runs under the highway um, that is much smaller than the, the culvert that enters it, and um, that leads up sizing. Um, okay. So I'll move that we uh, ask LCC to do yeah. that. And this is one that we have raised on innumerable occasions, Chairman. Do um, it. We have raised it with LCC, we have raised it at this committee, we've got resolutions on it, um, that highway culvert needs upgrading so as to relieve the pressure in the system, which as a consequence is flooding properties. So I think Councillor Tom Whip is proposing that we once again request LCC to upsize that culvert um, and I would second that. Gisborne Road, right. We've had two lots of uh, people down there, whether they're at highways, I'm not so sure, or it's uh, Open Reach, or it's another firm. They've been down there, they've dug all the pavement up and everything. It's all been dug up again, and it's been dug. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, I agree, the, the, the COVID phase sorting out and we need a bigger drain down there. But as soon as one person starts digging down, then there's another person comes in. There's no cooperation between any companies, United Utilities, Open Reach, and Gas, whoever they are. I suggest those people get the rest together. As well. <coughs> Chairman, yes. that may, or may, may not be the case. The crucial thing is that Lancashire County Council, as Highway Authority, are responsible for the highway culvert. The highway culvert takes all the water that's coming from Robinson Fold, from Brockton View, from Brockton Lane, <coughs> everything goes through that culvert. It is a bottleneck and we need to uh, increase the size of the bottleneck. Um, and I don't think the work that Jennifer was referring to, it, it was anything to do with the drainage. Um, the it's not to do with the drainage, but um, okay. So it, it's a resolution to Lancashire County Council requesting them, I think I would say as a matter of urgency, mm. to uh, improve, upgrade, upsize that highway culvert in order to get the flow of water that's coming out there. Okay, excellent. Um, we've got Wellhouse Road, um, which saw sort of uh, more than half a metre deep in water um, at one at the junction to uh, Skipton Road, um, and flowing right along that stretch there. Um, I think there was surcharge. Surcharge and sewage on that road as well. Yeah, yeah. And flowing into the units beyond the, the glass wires. And that stems from the, the drainage system going down Wellhouse Road and the streets adjoining Wellhouse Street and the roads down the road. All the buildings are blocked. They've all been reported and still blocked. So it's going to be a shame again. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think I'll um, Chairman, just some that uh, Councillor Tomwith hasn't mentioned, um, and then a, a general uh, thing, is United, United Utility Lids blowing um, on the power or combined systems at Valley Gardens, and uh, uh, thankful to uh, Mr. Walker's merry men and women in uh, putting the, the lid back on that, uh, that one because uh, it was quite dangerous. Um, on Gisborne Road, at the end of Valley Gardens, in the dip there, there was a considerable amount of highway flooding and it is in the dip and the question is, and the capacity, uh, the, the Becky's within, you know, it's, it's a lower level.
So can the capacity of the drains in the highway be improved so as to allow the water to get into the bank? Um, and the general issue, Chairman, is about sandbag supplies. And uh, in Barnoldswick, we have an open house policy so that the sandbag container is always unlocked. We might put the door to, but if anybody needs to get in an emergency, it, it can always be accessed in the town council. Um, purchases uh, pallets of sandbags from time to time uh, to, to stock it up. Uh, on the night in question, the two pallets of sandbags that were there went within a matter of minutes. Um, and it wasn't long before uh, we actually ran out. Uh, I made inquiries and I asked people in Eby if I uh, left messages with people to ask if the Eby stores could be opened. In the past, the sandbags in Van Oldswick have gone over to Eby. Councillor Tomlick and I have loaded back the cars and taken them over to Eby in necessity. And I think the, there's an issue about mutual aid. Well, um, you did, you did very well. Well, um, I was busy dealing with other stuff. Um, I left messages with several people, and uh, Councillor, or former Councillor Doris Haig, was trying to contact people on the town council. Um, I don't know who she contacted, but I haven't had any response. The point is can we have a, a protocol so that the sandbag stores can be opened up? Because here is a lot. And you know, can we have a protocol so that we can actually get access if need be? The storm, the flooding on the 9th of September was extremely localised to the extent that I contacted people in Salterford to say, Well, I was in here. And, and I think Kevin, it was you that said, Look, well, we haven't got hold here. <laughs> so it, it was very specific. Um, and then the final. Can, can I just ask, have you not got a copy of the community? Um, I don't think I have, Jen. Because, because that has all the contact numbers on it. Well, I, I, I spoke to somebody who was a previous flood warden and I left it with her to try and get them all. Who was that? Doris. Oh, right. okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the final thing that um, I wanted to, 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 to say, Chairman, um, I mean, we probably not captured all the individual incidents that there were, but the final thing was that um, uh, for the committee to express its thanks to Mr Walker and his team at Environmental Services for responding very promptly to um, our request for sandbags to be supplied and for dropping them off at, at uh, people's houses and restocking the, uh, the sandbag store on the evening in question. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of people involved so we're very grateful for the prompt attention to that and I think we should formally recognise it. Absolutely. Um, and I think it might be prudent if we could ask Gareth Asperley to send the council with a copy of the Eby Flood Plan uh, because it has all the relevant contact details for you to contact if you need sandbags or anything like that. Okay, so all that done. Right. Are you okay with all that? I've got to get I'm my shoulder. Nice. <laughs> yep. Okay. Move on then to B. West Coast Glory Park. Chairman. Um, well, that, 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 that... It was the other councillor. No, that, this one's mine. Um, this is actually an Eby Coates Ward. Um, just to ensure that people, you know, sort of know where we're talking about. Um, but the, the lorry park, um, and perhaps Councillor Tomwick wants to come in on the, the flight of it. Uh, but the, the surface of the lorry park is in very poor condition. There's um, a, a, a largish area where all the sealed surfaces come off and it's down to the stone beneath the, the layers of bitmap. 
and uh, it, 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 it's not good. And then there's an extensive area of uh, patchy uh, spalling where the, the surface is, is failing. And I wonder, Chairman, if we could get um, a, an estimate for the cost of carrying out effective repairs and resurfacing it. And I would move that we do um, ask for that. Got a yeah, I'll yeah. second that. Um, and doing so, just briefly touch on the bikes, I think, because I mean, it is a continual issue. Um, I think people go to the recycling centre, see closed gates, and think, oh, I've just done it here. Um, and really, um, LCC should be uh, putting a stop to that. I mean, I think, you know, even though it's our car park, you know, they're responsible. Um, so I think we need to ask LCC to. There was some, um, what's the word, um, deterrent, <laughs> you could say deterrent, yeah, um, but a, a course of action that could prevent a uh, flight of the out of that part. Okay, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. do yeah. monitor the common yeah. because it is a normal problem inside. We have offices that attend to a regular basis and have to record on the Yes, we do have problems with flight of and we do investigate to see if we can get any evidence. But we are making approaches to um, LCC, in particular the House of West Recycling to see whether we can get some support in, in cameras or something to offset the aid investigations. The chairman, would, would LCC actually clean up the waste that would otherwise have gone to the recycling centre? Yeah. I'll again to the chair, I'll, I'll raise that as a part of the discussion to see whether we can get some mutual aid again. In the end. Okay. Everybody agreed on that? Yeah? Okay, there you go. Outstanding items. Uh, I don't know if we've... Have we any updates on any of these? We have, we have some. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you probably all be aware of the yeah. few of these. But right. It's a trans uh, bus service, uh, which is, I think, the same as for the South. Yes. Um, the comments have been passed on to Lancashire County and Council. Uh, I think there was an issue with really, um, needing more buses, wasn't there? Yeah. The problem with the bonds and the bonds. We've got to be passed on, we're waiting for the LCC to come back with uh, their, their, their comments. Uh, you ready to work working group? Ten. 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 Can I just come on the Transdev yeah. issue? Right? So we know that Transdev have released a new timetable uh, to try and help with the situation that was occurring at Marlesbury. Unfortunately, the timetable for the extra bus that they've added arrives and skipped in at 8.59 in the morning, which is too late for commuters to get to work at 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Um, it's also too, early, too late for the school kids to get to school in the morning, so the effective bus is effectively less mm. useless. So, just add that in, but yeah. The council's got to share that. Yeah. Passing that, we can share it with the office of the county council. Um, the Arabia Working Group, and um, just with the last uh, meeting, um, the Arabia themselves uh, are asking that um, the diary sheets, uh, which have been um, sent out to those that are complaining about orders, uh, are returned prior to any meeting, giving them the opportunity to just investigate whether their engine cell was in use at the time, and they all being reported. Um, as far as I'm aware, I think the residents have been able to return to the hotel. Um, sorry, Carol, I wasn't aware of that bit of detail. I mean, we keep telling the residents that if you have found that, I wasn't aware there have been any diary sheets sent out. Tell us that you have a report in Valley Club of some diary sheets out. To who? To individuals, to particular people. Uh, I'm assuming so you've sort of mentioned three. So, yeah, okay. so three complaints. Okay, so yeah, well, I, I don't know who they are, so oh. I, I would hope that they complete them somewhere. So I want to get them back, <coughs> we can arrange a meeting with them. So I guess the meeting then won't happen until after that know. deadline? Yeah. The yeah. I can report that back. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, Apple Garth and Residence Parking, I believe. Um, so there's a request in the centre of the area to be surveyed. Um, that's now we should under uh, the vehicle control of LCC and the train out the um, I've been advised that we won't get an individual report for that, but the comments and responses to that will come through the uh, traffic liaison units. So the group will get an update on, on progress. Do you know when that will be? Uh, I, I don't know. Some people know those minutes to the next meeting. I don't know that will include the referral on the ORF Apple Guard. I'm not sure when the last meeting was a traffic liaison meeting. That's good. 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, a general point, first of all, would it not be possible to actually have these as proper items on the agenda um, and report back this information rather than go through a long list of outstanding issues and have a verbal report? But specifically on the request for residence parking, um, my understanding was that uh, certainly the case uh, up until May was that Lancashire County Council encourage uh, uh, surveys to be undertaken by people other than themselves and then that would help facilitate getting the residence parking schemes implemented where appropriate, not that Lancashire County Council would do the residence parking schemes themselves. And it's always been the practice in Pendle that Pendle Council staff would do surveys and then put a case up to LCC. Are we being told that that is now different? The information, sorry Chair, yeah. the information I've received is that it is now all LCC. But the, they, won't, they won't report back to this committee? No, they will report back to this committee, sorry Chair. They will report back to this committee through the traffic liaison minutes. So there will be an item on the minutes that this exactly. committee received. Some people are now said she's going to do a report for the November meeting, setting out the new procedure and some of the new info on the issue that come to transfer. Yeah. We'll see what we will see. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Next one, then, just on the story about the road. Yeah, I've checked, um, I've checked on that this morning, Chair. Uh, I've had by Scott and I've had a, a meeting with the Orchard Water representatives held uh, yesterday in which they find that the only problems on the story about the road is the Orchard Water are going to be investigating and we'll come back with some comments on the time and the experience and we'll get that. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> any, any other updates? Um, I think you're aware of Victoria Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think there's a meeting for the course in Skipton Road Junction and Matthew Arbors from LCC Operations Engineer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The day on the seventh and then North Bank Community Centre, together housing and members um, raising the Possible to bring that uh, building back into life. So, very long we've been contacted. We expressed the opinions of the committee in the last meeting, which we have set up, and we're waiting for that response. And so we'll, we'll pass it on as we have it. Okay, so when we get more information, we will let you know. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, item 14, exclusion of public request. We've no public request here. Chairman, so, yeah, what we do, we have, how many people have we got on? Currently, seven people viewing now. So, we're picking up seven people. And how many did we have at our peak? Um, I don't say the peak now, but there's been 86 people in total who have tuned in throughout the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.